Chris here, and it's been a week now with the Lapbook Pro from Chewy, and I've just got to state it straight outright that this is not actually any better than the Lapbook SC, which is still the current Gemini Lake Lapbook Kings. This is the Sauron N 4100. It's a quad core with a maximum turbo of 2.4 gigahertz. It has sadly only four gigabytes of RAM. Now, this is a problem that we had with all of these releases lately. There are some models from Tech Last, of course, that do have the eight gigabytes, but Chewy here seems to just be stuck with the four, unfortunately, and not matching their competitors, which is something I hope is gonna be changing in the future. Now, if you missed my unboxing video, I did cover the build, the design, and the speakers in that particular video. So do also check that one out if you want just a little bit more detail with some things. I'm gonna quickly recap here the build and a few things that I have discovered, and then get on to probably what you're more interested in, which is the performance of this particular laptop. So I'll start out with the bezels. As you can see, they are very slim, and this, screen is a real surprise to me because it actually turned out to be very good in in regards to the actual the color space we're getting with this was the gamut it's very good but more on that once i do the screen capturing i'll show you the exact adobe and srg percentages but they are really good in fact better than a thousand dollar laptops that i have reviewed so this has a type c port on here but what they've done is really silly to me because they put a Type-C port on here, but it does not actually support power delivery. There's not enough power output from this particular Type-C port here to power external hard drives. I mean, they will power. You sometimes can start moving and copying files off it, but when I tried to copy, for example, a two terabyte video file, it cut out halfway through. So it really cannot power large files, uh, large, large drives that is. So if you get a flash drive, you insert that in here, that's going to be fine because it's a low powered, but anything that has a high power demand, not going to work here. I've got a status LED there and then micro HDMI out, which does support 2K at 60 hertz. Tested that, no real problems. It is working fine. So the build, as you can see, is all metal. So they're going with the metal palm rares. Now, the first few days when I used this, I did notice some current actually coming through the frame of this, which is why a lot of manufacturers resort to putting plastic palm rests like the Labbook SE. It hasn't been happening again, which is, is quite strange. I haven't been able to reproduce that problem. Every time I have it plugged in now and I touch it, I cannot feel any charge coming through. Now that could just be just a one-off sort of thing that happened to me. The same with the space key. When I talked about the keyboard in the unboxing video that the keyboard is quite good to type on, but I have had and still do have a bit of an issue with my space key. Now after repeated use of it, I can comment that it has improved, but the very outer edges they don't register all the time. Now, in the beginning, it was not working about only about 50% of the time. Now it seems to have proved a, a little bit. So every, I would say now about seven times out of 10, it's going to work for me, this base key. Now I have confirmed, well, thank you for so many people that's come forward and talked to me about this problem. Confirmed with other users that their space key is actually fine with some people. And then another person that also commented that they had the same problem as me. So it's looking from what I've gathered of about five people that have come forward, one has the issue. So I would say there's maybe just a slim chance that if you were gonna be buying one of these, that you could have perhaps the space bar a little bit funny there and not, not really the greatest. The other thing to note too is the keyboard is backlit, but we have a little bit of light that comes through on the bottom, depending on the way you're looking at the keyboard that is. So if you're looking at it at a certain angle, you can get quite a bit of light coming through on the bottom that's a little bit blinding when you're using it uh, late at night. Other than that, the, the space bar issue, it's an okay keyboard, very similar to say the EasyBook 3 Pro that I reviewed. It almost seems like a similar build here that we've got with this particular laptop. Now 3.5 millimeter headphone jack does have a very clean and clear output to it. The speakers on the system, I'll just make a comment on them, but the samples actually in my unboxing video it is quite good. They're a little bit better than the Lapbook SEs, but they're still not amazing speakers. So don't expect to have some sort of Dolby, AKG tuned, really good Harman Infinity kind of speakers. No, this is not the case here. With a $300 laptop, you're not gonna get that kind of performance with it. Now the same goes with the webcam at the top. In fact, this webcam is absolutely terrible. Here's a sample of it. So this is the quality that you can expect from this webcam. It's a very poor, as you can see, grainy, blurry. The sound also has some hiss to it. And the frame rate of this video, 720p, is only about 15 frames per second. So really bad. So just to quickly back on the build of the laptop. So the screen goes back here, which is a fair enough angle. I think most people are going to be happy with that. The overall build of the laptop too is very good, all metal. And no logos, of course, on the back of the screen here. So the laptop AC does have a big Chewy logo, which a lot of people weren't very fond of. 
uh, myself too. I wasn't really that fast with it, but uh, you know, I think it's better this look to not have a big glowing logo on the back here. I prefer, it keeps it a little bit more professional looking and the hinge is very stiff too. So there's no problems with that build aspect there. There is the touchpad too that when I, if I tap on the palm rest here, you can probably hear that, that there is a little bit of a vibration coming through in that. So this could be just another first batch build problem like that space bar that's come through. Otherwise, it is a very good touchpad. I'm not having any issues using it. So the accuracy is fine, the finer movements, the sensitivity of it, all good. And the surface of it to me feels perfectly fine there as well. Now this laptop does come with 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. I'll get onto the speeds of that is soon, so shortly in this video. But I just wanted to point out too, that we do have this little hatch on the back here. As I pointed out in my unboxing video, that this is where you can install yourself a 2242, 2260, or 2280 SATA 3 M.2 SSD in there. And I highly recommend doing this to get better performance and more storage, of course. So this footage you're about to see is all being screen captured, not internally, but externally, so it won't affect the performance. It's at 60 frames per second as well. The recording rate 1080p. I've only upscaled it to 4K just to match the rest of the video. So the laptop saving grace, and one of the things that really did surprise me is this right here. So take a look at the screen, the gamut, the color space we have here is actually so good for this type of laptop. Selling for around 300 US, you would not expect this. So it has an sRGB of 99%. Now this this beats some of the $1,000, many of the $1,000 laptops that I have looked at. The NTSC is 73%, and then our Adobe RGB is 78% as well. So this is very good. The maximum brightness of the screen is around 350 lux. So a better panel than the Lapbook SE. So this is why I say that maybe this is the, the thing that's really saving it with the slimmer bezels. It certainly is a much more attractive screen. And if you intend to be doing color grading, photo work and things like that, but only light stuff, then this is ideal having such a good panel in this particular laptop. So maybe this is where Chewy spent all their money and why they couldn't give us power delivery support with the type C port. That's the reason going for that more expensive screen. So when we take a look at the wireless speeds, uh, it's not the fastest, it's the Intel 3165 wireless AC at least of course. So you can get on the five gigahertz band and that does improve the performance there. Now if you're doing FTP file transfer, it's going to be around 370, 380 megabits per second. So it's certainly not the fastest card. It has that one by one antenna setup. Geekbench 4 score is the only real benchmark I will show you here because I'm just going to focus on real world performance, which I believe is a lot more important, of course. So here we have a score that is very similar to the other laptops I have reviewed, perhaps a tad slower than the Lapbook SE here for some reason. And the Teclast F15, which got scores in 1800 there and perhaps about another 100 more points there, but they're more or less the same. So I have some applications here open that I wanted to demonstrate to you the performance you can expect. So a lot of people will be asking me about what about Photoshop edits? So I've got a few layers in here. There's uh, my old thumbs I used to use for my videos. I wanted to demonstrate with the high megapixel image that's in here and a few other apps open that want to go to move this around, take a look at this terrible lag. So it's a little choppy. I mean, it's possible. Now, if I do, of course, kill Chrome, kill down these um, other apps I've got, like LibreOffice and things in the background. Yeah, that will help boost up the performance, but it's not gonna be wonderful. You can even see that when you enable and disable different layers and things that it doesn't exactly load in super quick. Now I'm gonna close that to help boost our performance because I'm a little low on RAM. But just one of the things, the, the limit of this particular tech, having only four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, not exactly amazing. So it's for good for basic tasks, as I will show you. So you're going to be in your documents, so Microsoft Docs, and this is LibreOffice here. Performance is fine. You so see you can scroll, edit, add your images, and you're not going to see too much of a problem at all with that. This is what this tech is ideal for. This particular CPU is all about battery life and just giving you efficient performance here. And when you move over to, say, Excel spreadsheets, spreadsheets as well, as long as they're not huge, like two megabytes and pages and pages and then you're going to have no problems too with this. So that's going to be fine, searching, editing, and things like that. Now, if you're using formulas and really massive ones, again, expect the performance to be a little bit slow. It will help if you're on an SSD, which I highly recommend. Now for my Google Chrome browser tab test. So I'm just going to go to Google here 
And what I'll do is I will bring up just something generic. So I'll just search uh, houses. Open up a lot of tabs and we'll see how it performs. So I found that you can run normally with the four gigabytes of RAM and this hardware about 10 tabs. Once you go over 10, you'll find they start to reload. So you can see this, this is actually loading in really quite quick. Those tabs, hopefully they are fully loaded. So I think that'll be enough. I don't want to push it too much and swap between them here. Okay, so that performance looks reasonably good. Some of these pages took a little while to render just coming in. And it's understandable because I've got the video going there in the background as well. And still some things caching in there. So I'll go back to these other tabs, back to the speed test. And that is still there. So that's really about the, the limit there. Once you start to push it with even more tabs than this. So there was one guy in the comments last time said to me, I run 30 tabs in Chrome. Can I do it? No. I mean, you can, you can try, but it will start to reload those all the time. So the thermals, we'll have a look at that. I have done some gaming just before, which I will show you shortly. 77 degrees. Remember, this is passively cooled. There's no fan in there. And it does get a little warm, the outside of it. So on the bottom around the palm rest on the left-hand side, when you're charging and then gaming at the same time, it will get up to about 35 degrees. So it's warm to the touch, but it's nothing alarming. It's, to me, perfectly fine, considering, again, that there's no fan in here. So checks out with the thermals. There's no need to do, I feel, any modifications. We've got the 12 watts that they are running by default. So if you were to increase that to, say, 15 and really push it, then maybe you might have to do some mods right then with that. So battery life, I've done a few tests on it, and it is exactly the same as the Lapbook SE. Well, more or less. You're going to get somewhere between about 7 to 8 hours, and that's with the brightness at about 30 to 40%. Running it uh, indoors, you can see the screen perfectly fine. So I think think that the battery life here is actually quite good. This is what the Gemini Lake is all about, of course. Battery life. And now on to video performance. So streaming 4K, this is back in YouTube. And you can see that uh, we're going to get a few drop frames here. It's starting out and it's looking pretty good. And smooth. And easy. As long, of course, your internet connection can keep up with this. And now a 4K 60 megabit per second 10 bit encoded HEVC file. Playback looks good, although not perfect. I am seeing a few little stutters here. You can skip ahead fine. You can see it will load it in. Right, so moving on now to have a look at some gaming performance. So you can game, as you can see, some light titles. Older games, they are going to be playable. So you're getting about 45 frames per second here in Counter Strike. This is on the Dust 2 with a full server, well, eight each side. And really, it's not too bad, I feel, for this particular hardware at 720p. Although I just got a massive frame dip then down to 17 frames per second. So it's not going to be amazing performance, as you can clearly see here. But it's not overall bad, I believe, for what it is. I mean, yeah, of course, 60 frames per second would be so much better. And the other game I'd like to test out, this is League of Legends, running in 1080p. That's why it looks so much sharper and better than Counter-Strike. And it will run on the low setting, about 60 frames per second, as you can see. When you move around the map, it will dip down, but not by much. Still keeping over the 60 frames per second, in fact, which is really good. So I'm happy with the performance, especially here in League of Legends. And as for Linux use, if you didn't see my unboxing video that Linux Mint, I tested it out. It was the latest build, working all fine. So that is really good to see. Now the build quality of the laptop, overall, it is nice. It's well put together. The weight isn't too bad. I mean, it's 1.47 kilos, so not the lightest out there. The Chewy AeroBook is a good 200 grams or so lighter. The screen is what makes this laptop. So you can see that, to me, clearly, most of the budget went on the screen. So it has a very good sRGB, 99%, and Adobe RGB rating as well, much better than the Lapbook SE. It's also a good 120 or so lux brighter, so a much brighter screen. And being the fact, yes, that it's fully laminated, it's glossy, super reflective, but that can be fixed if you apply one of those matte anti-glare screen protectors. And as long as you don't get any annoying dust under the screen protector when you apply it, it actually turns out to work and be all right. I've done it before myself. So the Type-C port is a really big, huge letdown there. The fact that it does not support power delivery, and then it cannot power external hard drives. It can power your flash drives, mice, webcams, all of that just fine. It's just anything that needs a high power output from a USB port, 
it's not there. I don't know why. So they really did mess up a little bit there with uh, the Type-C port on here. I would have rather just had DC in charging and another USB 3 port here, second one, instead of the Type-C port because it doesn't support the power delivery. So it really defeats the purpose completely. Webcams, absolutely terrible, as you saw from my sample. Not good at all because the bezel's so small. They've used a very small sensor. It's absolutely tiny when you look at it. And you can see from the resulting quality, really bad. Speakers are better than the Lapbook SE, but overall, that's the model to go for, the Lapbook SE. So please do check my review of that one. You can pick it up for a little bit more expensive than this model, but it does come with an SSD. And overall, it gives the same kind of performance which is good. The thermals on this as well are good. And the battery life, seven to eight hours. Very similar there, but it's just because of the better keyboard with that model. The fact that we got another second USB 3 port and the micro SD card means without a doubt in my mind that the Lapbook SE is still the best Gemini Lake laptop to go for. Thank you so much for watching this review. Please do think about subscribing if you like these kind of reviews here from me because I will have plenty more and I do hope to catch you back with the next video. Bye for now.